Hello folks, welcome back to the channel Explain Within. Hope you all are doing great. Today we are going to discuss a new problem called NQ. Uh, this is one of the hardest problems in the read code. So let's dive into the problem. First of all, what is Q? Do you know Q moves in the chessboard? Basically, you have Q, it can move eight directions up, down, top, bottom and four diagonal directions getting this every one so just consider n equal to one is actually showing one into one board if n equal to one the chess board we can easily place q over here so answer equal to true because we can place the one q without threatening each other then n equal to what you think can possible to place two q in a chess board no then if n equal to 3 is possible to place 3 q in 3 cross 3 board so we can place 3 q in 3 cross 3 board then if n equal to 4 let's find out so what is an answer of this case yes we can place 4 q in the 4 into 4 board so next n equal to 5 we can place 5 q in the 5 cross 5 board let's find out here in this picture we are placing the first q in the first row and second q in the second row so on the fifth q in the fifth row but the columns are different and none of the q can threaten each other so what is the answer of this case yes we can place a 5 q in the 5 into 5 chess board then n equal to 6 is it possible to make 6 q can place in a 6 into 6 chess board yes we can place so do you guys notice that we can also place q in a different combination for n equal to 4 we can place q in two different combinations for n equal to 5 we can place q in 10 different combinations for n equal to 6 we can place q in 4 different combinations and so on now it may sound easy right but as now n getting larger the problem quickly become very difficult now you can see this picture it's a large chessboard if i want to place this n number of q in here it's very difficult to find so what to do so let's solve the problem here in lead code the question is the n q puzzles in the problems of placing n q on an n cross n chessboard such that no two q attack each other given an integer n return all distinct solution to the n q puzzles you may return the answer in any order each solution contain a distinct board configuration of the n q placement where q and dot both indicate a q and an empty space respectively so there is a duty array that contain q and dots the q represent the q and dot represent the empty spaces in that matrix so how do we solve this problem the answer lies in using a technique called backtracking backtracking is a general algorithmic technique that tries out different solutions and retracts back when it finds the current solution is not feasible to know more about the backtracking i am giving a meeting link in the description box do check out my friends let's know how we can use the backtracking to solve the nq problem first let's start with the code here we use java for this example but the algorithm can be implemented in any programming language. So we start by initializing an empty list to store the solution and initializing an n into n just for with a dot empty squares and q represent by the units. List of list of integer result equal to no array list then a string of array equal to no string of array length of n for i equal to 0, i less than n, i plus plus, for j equal to 0, j less than n, j plus plus, board of i j equal to dot. Initially, we are considering empty space for all our board. Now, we are write the main function to solve the n given problem. Before, we are initialize the board and we are now passing this board and the result to solve the n given problem to solve the n given problem using backtracking 
the function takes the parameter an empty board and zeros the row index and the list to store the result. Now we want to know how we can implement the backtracking here. Here consider n equal to 4, so 4 cross 4 board. So first row of the board we can place the q in here or here here or here so there are n options similarly for each rows we can place each row we can have n options so we can see this picture for trying to solve this using backtracking each row will iterate through backtracking so there is n equal to 4 there is four option to place the queue in each row so considering that the each row can be divided into four sub part like this and again it's divided into four sub part so this continue as will be the row equal to row length so we can see this picture this is the full fledged figure of how the backtracking working here consider n equal to 4, 4 and 4 cross board. So the first row of the board, we can place the Q in here or here. So just observe this and we can get some observation. The first observation, one Q in each row. And the second one is one Q in each column. So we can place one Q in each row and column. We can either place a Q in row by row or column by column. If any point of time we blocked then do backtrack. So here we are iterating the row and doing backtracking for getting successful backtrack. We need an additional function for checking the position is safe for Q. If it is safe, the safe function give the feedback as per we are actually placing the Q. If we place Q and do backtrack, then to remember that whenever we blocked, we want to go back and so we need to change the queue and make the place as before so we are iterating the board with respect to column there is a four option right column to board length if e safe we are initializing the function e safe and we are giving the values of board row and column is true then there is no threatening queues so we can easily place the queue on that particular place if then we are again we are doing backtracking here and here row plus one board comma row plus one result after backtracking if there is have any blocked or have any not possible to place a queue then we are backtracking then we want to change the position as before so we are giving dot here now what about the base case the base case whenever we recursively iterate all the row or all the column then we need to add the answer in the list to under return it so this question the answer should be print as a list of list of strings so in this case actually if the row equal to board length then we are opening the if loop and we are now initializing the string list for storing the result then we are iterating the board if we want to add the answer as a string in each row the in the list we need it to a immutable string so we use a string builder now for each iteration and again we are iterating the board of a j and we are appending the answer and after closing the first for loop we are adding that to the board list then we are added that board list to the result and return it that simple next we need a function to check if the n can be placed in a given position without being threatened by any other tunes so we will call the function e safe in e safe we have the insert we have the function string board and uh, in the row and in column and we are checking in the column each column and upper left diagonal and upper right diagonal for want to check the column we are just iterating to uh, zero to row row length and if the board of i comma column equal to q then it returns false also we want to check the upper left diagonal so equal to row minus one column minus one j equal to column minus one and i less than or equal to zero and j less than or equal to zero i minus minus j minus minus because it's a we are actually one to the upper left diagonal positions so we are doing like this then if the board of i j equal to q we are written false also we are checking the upper right diagonal 
so the rho equal to r minus 1 rho minus 1 j equal to column plus 1 i less than or equal to 0 and j less than board of length and i minus minus j plus plus if board of i j equal to q return false and then after this all condition is uh, not failing then we are going to return true the end game function is where the magic happens we take a board and a column index as parameter if the column index is equal to m it means we have successfully placed all q on the board so we add the board to the solution list which means a result otherwise we iterate over the each row and check if it is safe to place a q in that position if it is true we mark that position and recursively call nq function with the updated board and call the index plus one if the recursive call return false be backtrack by making that position on the board as zero and move on the next row here in the main function we are make the nq function and give the parameters now we are return the result and that's it now we have complete a java program to solve the nq problem using backtracking so we just want to check the problem uh, i'm going to submit the problem let's uh, test the problem then submit yeah it's working fine and see uh, what the output will look like for n there is a two possible solution uh, for placing for q and all for 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 just board yeah it's working and for one q and can place one board yeah it's actually working then we can submit the code now yeah successfully accepted the solution now the time complexity and space complexity of the code the time complexity of this solution is o of n into n factorial it's nearly equal to o of n factorial as it uses a recursive algorithm to try all the possible combinations of placing cubes on the board and the e safe taking n in the worst case scenario where there is no solution all the algorithm will have to backtrack to the all possible solution to find the next one leading to the time complexity of, of n factorial the space complexity of the solution is o of n square as it used as a 2d array of size n into n plus n the chessboard additionally it uses a list of size n to store the each solution therefore the space complexity of a solution is o of n square plus n which means which is simplified as o of n square there you have it we are successfully solved the nq problem using the backtrack in java you can try running the program the large input to see how the numbers of a solution grows exponentially with the size of the chessboard so here the eSafe function has a time complexity of O of n, right? Can we reduce the time complexity to O of 1? Yes, we can. To know more about that efficient approach, please follow my channel. I am Amitin and I am coming with the efficient approach in the next video. Until then, take care. Thank you.